All right, properties of minerals. What is a mineral? Look at the two substances in figure one. On the left is a hard chunk of coal. On the right are beautiful quartz crystals. Both are solid materials that form beneath Earth's surface. But which is a mineral? Defining minerals. How are minerals defined? A mineral is a naturally occurring solid that can form by inorganic processes and that has a crystal structure and a definite chemical composition. For a substance to be a mineral, it must have all five of these characteristics. So, is either quartz or coal a mineral? All right, naturally occurring. Let me try and get this. There we go. All minerals are substances that are formed by natural processes. Quartz form naturally as molten material called magma cools and hardens beneath the earth's surface. Coal forms naturally from the remains of plants that are squeezed tightly together. Solid. A mineral is always a solid with a definite volume and shape. The particles that make up a solid are packed tightly together so they cannot move like the particles that make up a liquid. Coal and quartz are solids. Crystal structure. The particles of a mineral line up in a pattern that repeats over and over again. The repeating pattern of a mineral's particles forms a solid called a crystal. A crystal has flat sides called faces that meet at sharp edges and corners. The quartz in figure one has a crystal structure. In contrast, most coal lacks a crystal structure. Forms by inorganic processes. All minerals must be able to form by inorganic processes. That is, every mineral must be able to form from materials that were not a part of living things. Quartz can form naturally as magma cools. Coal comes only from living things, the remains of plants that lived millions of years ago. But some minerals that can form from inorganic processes may also be produced by living things. Definite chemical composition. A mineral has a definite chemical composition. This means that a mineral always contains certain elements in definite proportions. An element is a substance composed of a single kind of atom. Quartz always contains one atom of silicon for every two atoms of oxygen. The elements in coal can vary over a wide range. To be classified as a mineral, a substance must satisfy five requirements. Complete the checklist. Are quartz and coal minerals or only naturally occurring substances? So look at them, read through these boxes again, and decide if they need a check or an X. All right, minerals, compounds, and elements. Almost all minerals are compounds. In a compound, two or more elements are combined so that the elements no longer have distinct properties. For example, the mineral cinnabar is composed of the elements sulfur and mercury. Sulfur is bright yellow, mercury is a silvery liquid at room temperature but cinnabar has solid, shiny red crystals. Different minerals have a different combination of elements. For example, a crystal of quartz has one atom of silicon for every two atoms of oxygen. This ratio is constant for all varieties of quartz. Each mineral in the garnet group of minerals has three atoms of silicon for every 12 atoms of oxygen, but garnets also contain other elements and set ratios. Figure two shows one variety of garnet. Some elements occur in nature in a pure form and not as part of a compound. Elements such as copper, silver, and gold are also minerals. Almost all pure, solid elements are metals. All right, so over here. Quartz and the garnet minerals contain the elements silicon and oxygen. At room temperature, pure silicon is a hard, dark gray solid. Oxygen is a colorless gas. Choose either quartz or garnet, then choose silicon or oxygen. When your element is part of a mineral, how is it different from its pure form? All right, and assess your understanding. All minerals must be able to form from organic or inorganic processes. What specifically makes a process inorganic? Amber is a material used in jewelry. It forms only by the process of pine tree resin hardening into stone. Is amber a mineral? Explain. All right, how are minerals identified? Geologists have identified more than 4,000 minerals, but telling these minerals apart can often be a challenge. Each mineral has characteristic properties that can be used to identify it. Color. Both minerals shown here are the color gold, but only one is the mineral gold. In fact, only a few minerals have their own characteristic color. Streak. The streak of a mineral is the color of its powder. Although the color of a mineral can vary, its streak does not. However, the streak color and the mineral color are often different.
For example, pyrite has a gold color, but its streak is greenish black. And luster. Luster is the term used to describe how light is reflected from a mineral surface. For example, minerals such as galena that contain metals often have a metallic luster. Quartz has a glassy luster. Other terms used to describe luster include earthy, silky, waxy, greasy, and pearly. Okay? So both minerals shown here are gold in color. Identify. Circle the mineral that you think is gold. Infer. Which is more useful when identifying a mineral? The mineral's color or the mineral streak? Geologists use many terms to describe the luster of minerals. Choose any item in your classroom that reflects light. In one word, describe its luster. List the item and the luster word you would use. All right, hardness. When you want to identify a mineral, one of the most useful clues to use is the mineral's hardness. In 1812, Austrian Friedrich Mose, a mineral expert, invented a scale to help identify minerals by how hard they are. The Mose hardness scale is used to rank the hardness of minerals. The scale assigns a mineral's hardness a ranking from 1 to 10, as shown in Figure 3. Hardness can be determined by a scratch test. A mineral can scratch any mineral softer than itself, but can be scratched by any mineral that is harder. For example, suppose you found a deposit of azurite. Azurite is not on the Mohs scale, but you would like to determine its hardness. So you take a small sample and try to scratch it with talc, gypsum, and calcite. But none of these minerals scratch your sample. Apatite, rated 5 on the scale, does scratch it. Therefore, the hardness of azurite is probably around 4. Did you know? Apatite is a mineral included in the Mohs hardness scale. Enamel on mature teeth consists mainly of apatite crystals. Alright, so Mohs hardness scale. Geologists determine a mineral's hardness by comparing it to the hardness of the minerals on the Mohs scale. So explain. Read the description of each mineral at the right. Place each mineral's name in its proper location in the scale. So read about these minerals and place them in this scale where you think they should go. All right, do the math. For many minerals, different samples of a mineral all have the same density. So geologists can use density to help identify mineral samples. To do so, they use the following formula. Density equals mass divided by volume. You find a sample of the mineral magnetite. The sample has a mass of 151.0 grams and a volume of 29 centimeters cubed. What is the density of magnetite? All right, density. Each mineral has a characteristic density. Recall that density is the mass in a given space or mass per unit volume. No matter how large or small the mineral sample is, the density of that mineral always remains the same. For example, the density of quartz is 2.6 grams per cubic centimeter. The density of diamond is 3.5 grams per cubic centimeter. To measure density, geologists use a balance to first determine the precise mass of a mineral sample. Then they place the mineral in water to determine how much water the sample displaces. The volume of the displaced water equals the volume of the sample. The mineral's density can then be calculated using the formula below. You can compare the density of two mineral samples of about the same size. Just pick them up and heft them or fill their weight in your hands. The sample that feels heavier is probably also more dense. Alright, crystal structure. The atoms that make up a mineral line, the atoms that make up a mineral line up in a regular pattern. This pattern repeats over and over. The repeating pattern of a mineral's atoms form a mineral's crystal structure. All the crystals of a mineral have the same crystal structure. Scientists can use crystal structure to identify very small mineral samples. For example, a scientist can bounce a powerful beam of particles off very small crystals. Because the atoms that make up minerals line up in regular patterns, these beams produce distinct patterns of light. As shown in Figure 4, different minerals have crystals that are shaped differently. Halite crystals are cubic. That is, they are shaped like a cube. You can break a large piece of halite into smaller pieces but the smaller pieces still contain crystals that are perfect cubes. Geologists classify crystals by the number of faces or sides on the crystal. They also measure the angles at which the faces meet. Alright, so for crystal structure, 
What two features do geologists use to classify crystals? Number two, does a quartz crystal have more or fewer faces than a halite crystal? Use this picture to help you with that. All right, and then what do you know? The photograph shows crystals of the mineral stibnite. Read the text about how minerals are identified. Then identify which of stibnite's characteristic properties you can infer from the photograph. Which properties would you need to test before being able to identify the mineral? Cleavage and fracture. You may be familiar with how the mineral mica can split apart to form flat sheets. A mineral that splits easily along flat surfaces has the property called cleavage. Whether a mineral has cleavage depends on how the atoms in its crystals are arranged. The way atoms are arranged in mica allows it to split easily in one direction. Figure 5 shows cleavage in mica. Most minerals do not split apart evenly. Instead, they have a characteristic type of fracture. Fracture describes how a mineral looks when it breaks apart in an irregular way. For example, when quartz breaks, it produces curved shell-like surfaces. Special properties. Some minerals can be identified by special physical properties. Calcite bends light to produce double images as shown in figure six. Other minerals conduct electricity, glow when placed under ultraviolet light, or are magnetic. All right, fracture and cleavage. How a mineral breaks apart can help to identify it. Observe the examples of cleavage and fractures above. Based on your observations, write a definition of cleavage in your own words. All right, assess your understanding. Geologists identify minerals by performing tests that identify their what? All right, lodestone is magnetic. How might you identify whether a mineral sample might be lodestone? All right, how do minerals form? On a rock collecting field trip, you find an egg-shaped rock about the size of a football. Later, at a geologic laboratory, you split the rock open. The rock is hollow. Its inside surface sparkles with large amethyst crystals. Amethyst is a type of quartz. You have found a geode, as shown in figure 7. A geode is a rounded, hollow rock that is often lined with mineral crystals. Geologists believe that crystals probably form inside a geode when water containing dissolved minerals seeps into a crack or hollow in a rock. Slowly, crystallization occurs, lining the inside with large crystals that are often perfectly formed. Crystallization is the process by which atoms are arranged to form a material that has a crystal structure. In general, minerals can form in three ways. Some minerals form from organic processes. Other minerals can crystallize from materials dissolved in solutions. Finally, finally many minerals crystallize as magma and lava cool. You can test a mineral to determine which group it belongs to. All minerals can form by inorganic processes. However, some minerals can also form by organic processes. For instance, ocean animals such as clams and corals produce shells and skeletons made out of the mineral calcite. All right, figure seven. Water seeping into a crack in a rock can result in the formation of a geode. Complete the graphic organizer to show how a geode forms in four steps. So here is the organizer. Steps one and four have been done for you. You need to fill in the middle two. Minerals from solutions. Sometimes the elements and compounds that form minerals can be dissolved in water to form solutions. A solution is a mixture in which one substance is dissolved in another. When elements and compounds that are dissolved in water leave a solution, crystallization occurs. Minerals can form in this way in bodies of water on Earth's surface, but the huge selenite crystals shown in the gypsum image in figure 8 formed from a solution of hot water that cooled underground. All right, minerals formed by evaporation. Some minerals form when solutions evaporate. For example, when the water in salt water evaporates, it leaves behind salt crystals. In a similar way, deposits of the mineral halite formed over millions of years when ancient seas slowly evaporated. Such halite deposits are found in the American Southwest and along the Gulf Coast. Gypsum and calcite can also form by evaporation. Sometimes gypsum forms in the shape of a rose. Minerals from hot water solutions. Deep underground, magma can heat water to a high temperature. 
The hot water can dissolve the elements and compounds that form minerals. When the hot water solution begins to cool, the elements and compounds leave the solution and crystallize as minerals. For example, quartz can crystallize from out of a hot water solution. Pure silver is also often deposited from a hot water solution. Gold, too, can be deposited in this way. Pure metals that crystallize from hot water solutions underground often form veins. A vein is a narrow, narrow channel or a slab of mineral that is different from the surrounding rock. Minerals from magma and lava. Many minerals form from magma and lava, liquid magma that reaches Earth's surface. Minerals form as hot magma cools inside the crust, Earth's outer layer, or as lava hardens on Earth's surface. After cooling to a solid state, the liquid forms crystals. The size of the crystals depends on several factors. The cooling rate of the magma, the amount of gas in the magma, and the magma's chemical composition. Magma and lava are often rich in oxygen and silicon. Minerals that contain these elements are called silicates. Together, silicates make up a majority of Earth's crust. Review the text on this page and on the previous page. Underline the name of each mineral then first, the first time it is mentioned. Then place each mineral in its correct place in Figure 9. All right, minerals form from magma. Magma that remains deep below the surface cools slowly over thousands of years. Slow cooling leads to the formation of large crystals. Quartz, feldspar, tourmaline, and mica are common silicate minerals that form from magma. Minerals from lava. If magma erupts to the surface and becomes lava, the lava will cool quickly. There will be no time for large crystals to form. Instead, small crystals form. Lucite and olivine are silicate minerals that can form in lava. Minerals can form by the crystallization of magma and lava or by the crystallization of materials dissolved in water. Minerals formed by evaporation, minerals formed in hot water solutions, minerals formed as magma cools, and minerals formed as lava cools. That's where you're going to be writing the names from the, this page and the page before. Where minimal, mineral resources are found. Earth's crust is made up mostly of the common rock forming minerals combined in various types of rock. Less common minerals are not found evenly throughout the crust. Instead, several processes can concentrate these minerals or bring them together in deposits. An ore is a deposit of valuable minerals contained in rocks. Iron ores may contain the iron-bearing minerals pyrite, magnetite, and hematite. Lead ores may contain galena. These ores are mined and the iron or lead is separated from the rock. Graphite and sulfur are sometimes also mined. Figure 10 shows some major mining areas. Ores. Copper, aluminum, zinc, iron, and nickel can be used in making refrigerators. Which of these metals might the United States need to import for its refrigerators? Use this map to help you answer that question. Review. Magma below Earth's surface cools slowly or quickly. Slow cooling of magma leads to what size mineral crystals? Why do you think minerals and ores are important resources?